Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. So now that my living room is finally done, I thought we would get a head start on the entryway slash entryway closet because it feels kind of incomplete right now. Now that it's winter time, I'm in desperate need of a front closet. Right now, it stores nothing. So today I wanted to head over to Ikea and hack a bench. My vision is to make the closet kind of like a mudroom area, so that is what we're going to get started on today. And before we jump into it, I want to talk about today's video sponsor, Ritual. It is a new year and the start of a new year is a great time to start new habits. I'm making it a huge goal this year to take better care of my body. So that means working out more, cooking at home, and also taking more time for self-care. And I was very excited to get started with Ritual because I've heard nothing but good things about them. I've been taking their Essential for Women multivitamin 18 plus for over a month now, which is actually a huge accomplishment for me. So here's my bottle for this month and it's honestly been the easiest good habit that I've been keeping up with. Taking multivitamins is definitely a long-term commitment to start seeing the benefits. And I like that you don't have to take this with food. So right when I wake up in the morning, I just take this with my morning water. And if you look closely in the bottle right here, that is actually a mint tab and it gives the tablets a mint essence. And I think the minty taste just makes it so much more enjoyable and you just feel fresh after taking it. So that is definitely a plus. And I'm usually not one to eat breakfast in the morning. So in the past, I would forget to take my multivitamin. So knowing that I could take these at any time has helped out tremendously and it's only two pills a day and I have not missed a day since I started. Essential for Women is a clinically backed multivitamin and it's formulated to help fill nutrient gaps in women's diets. I have not been the best with keeping a balanced diet lately, so knowing that I'm getting everything that I need from my multivitamin definitely gives me a peace of mind. They are vegan and also gluten and major allergen free. Essential for Women is made traceable with a visible supply chain so you know what you're putting into your body. All their products ship fresh so it's never sitting on a shelf and with their direct to consumer model, you can get quality ingredients at a great value. If you click on my link below and use my special discount code, you will get 10% off of your first three months with Ritual. So you can use code 10TINA at checkout and they also have bundles so you can save even more. And with a Ritual subscription, you'll also get free shipping on every order, a 30 day money back guarantee, and you can cancel at any time. All right, so now I'm gonna take you guys over to the closet and that way you could see what we're working with and kind of the plan that I have behind the whole organization system. Okay, so here's what we're working with. This is the entry closet and it has classic bifold doors. So I'm still debating if I want to keep them to be bifold or if I just want two regular doors to open up. Should I make this an open concept? mudroom entryway. I would love to hear your thoughts. My only concern with keeping this open is that the mess is going to be exposed all the time, so maybe I will not go that route. But as you can see inside, we just have a nice narrow long closet. And for some reason, all of the rods are missing in the closet, so everything's kind of on the floor right now. But either way, I'm thinking of putting a bench right down here so that we could sit and put our shoes on. I really wanna do like a console table on this wall, so this would be the perfect spot for that. I have a couple of pieces in mind, so we're gonna head over to Ikea and see what we can find. I had three different options in mind when I went to Ikea, and I will put the names on the screen because I'm definitely going to butcher them. This first one is actually in the kids section. It's used for toy storage with a pullout drawer with a lot of space inside, so I loved this option. The second one is definitely made for shoes with sliding doors and you can easily change out the feet if you wanted to. And the last option is this classic bench with cubby holes and I really liked that it had a seat cushion. It could also customize what storage you put into each of the cubbies as well. We headed downstairs to go get option number two, but it actually was out of stock, unfortunately. So instead, we grabbed the first option and got home to DIY it. Oh no! <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, so I'm running out of rooms to DIY in upstairs, so we were in the basement today. It'll also be easier because the miter saw is down here, but I apologize in advance for the echo that you guys are going to hear. I have my two Ikea boxes here. Hopefully it won't be too difficult to assemble. Let's see how long it's gonna take me. Thank goodness this doesn't have too many pieces, so it actually was very quick to build. It took me about 30 minutes to put together the drawer and the box, so I think that's pretty good. My vision for this bench is to paint the outer part a dark color, and you guys should know me by now, so there is no surprise that I'm probably gonna go with black for this. And for the actual drawer front, I am imagining a wood slat look, so I think that would make it look really custom and not like an Ikea piece at all. 
Overall, I found this to be a really solid piece. So if you're planning to use this as a toy storage or as a bench, I think it feels really durable and was also a great price. And of course we have to do a sit test. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh, yay, it's secure. Oh my God, love it. So as is, all you have to do is pull out the drawer and you have ample space in there. There's no tracks to this, so you could just pull the whole thing out. And it does not come with any of the hardware or the knobs, so I ordered one to fit onto here. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so I want to paint this black, and this is super, super smooth, so I'm going to put some primer on top first. And now that I know everything fits, I actually meant to not put the drawer front on because I want to put like a wood paneling across. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and take it off because that'll make my life easier. But first we'll do the primer and then probably work on this while that's drying. Oh my God, the worst thing about working downstairs is that I have to run upstairs for like one item then I have to go all the way back downstairs and it is literally a workout. Ikea furniture usually has a glossy sheen to it, so you definitely need to use a primer to help adhere the paint. However, I'm using a chalk paint today, and I've seen online that some people don't use a primer when using chalk paint on furniture. So let me know in the comments what your best advice is. I'm just taking the extra precautions just in case. This paint goes on very smoothly, and with the roller, I didn't find that it left any texture onto the surface, which is always one of my concerns, especially when painting furniture. I definitely do not want any streaks, and with this paint, I did not see much of that at all. I love that this color is charcoal, which does look a little bit different than the true black pieces that I already have around the house. And I will post some inspo pics of what I'm imagining for inside the closet. I love the idea of using hooks instead of a rod, because let's be honest, I usually do not take my time to put the coat on a hanger. More likely than not, it just gets thrown onto a piece of furniture. So I think if I were to do hooks, I would actually be using it more so things would be hung up and organized. My only issue is that hooks hold less than a rod would. So if you have any other storage solutions or thoughts on this idea, I would love to hear them in the comments below. After just one coat, this looks really nice, but you could see that there are some spots where I kind of have to touch up. So I need to do one more coat, but what's really nice about this is that it dries super fast, so this process goes by really quickly. Okay, so for the drawer front, I really wanted to do something that was slatted slash fluted. And I wanted it to be wood, but I was having a hard time trying to find pieces that were small enough. In the past, I've used wood like this, but it's a little bit too wide. And you could also use dowels, but those are also pretty thick. And I just didn't want to add any more thickness to the drawer front. And as I was looking around, I found this. And it basically is a tongue and groove bead board. So it has that beautiful bead board pattern. And you basically just slide it under each other. I will show you guys in a second. But when I flipped it around, I realized that it is basically the perfect width of how I wanted the drawer front to look. It gives that beautiful satted look without having to piece every single one of them together. So I think this is gonna make the process a lot easier. Let me actually open this up and show you guys because it's my first time using something like this. Ooh, these are super thin, which is perfect. So I have two boards right here and they're basically going to fit like a puzzle piece. So it is a tongue and groove system. So if you just press them together, it makes it look super seamless. So just like that, but since we are going to be working with the backside, I do want to leave a little bit of a gap between the two so that it looks pretty even. So it'll be something like this. And what's great is that you can paint this or stain it. I think I'm going to stain it and then seal it. But yeah, for now, I'm going to measure everything out and then cut it. With my miter saw, I cut the panels down to the exact height of the drawer front, and I needed about 10 of these to span across the entire thing.
As I was doing a dry fit with the boards, I used the tongue side of an extra board as a spacer and this actually worked perfectly. It allowed me to see exactly how everything was going to fit together. And luckily by the time that I got to the last piece, the beadboard fit in perfectly with the exception of a little bit of the tongue sticking out of one side. So I just cut it with a utility knife and sanded it down. This fits together beautifully and at the end here there is a little bit of an overhang But what I want to do first is just to glue them all down together So that I have the exact measurement and that way I can mark it off at the end and then cut off this last piece I'm adding liquid nails to the beadboard side and then I'm firmly pressing it to get the first piece to line up Perfectly with the drawer front so that it's as straight as possible after that, we're going to interlock each one of them together with the tongue and groove. I found this pretty easy to do even with the glue on the back side. And my original plan was to only use the liquid nails and the clamps to keep everything in place. Unfortunately, I did not have enough clamps to make this work because I noticed that the boards were buckling and looked uneven. So instead, I used my brand nailer with 3 8 of an inch nails to hold all the boards together. Also, after sharing my coffee table DIY, one of you guys suggested that I would look into pull wrap, which is basically a slatted material that is flexible. I think that would actually work really perfect for this project as well. So I'll have it linked down below if you guys are curious, but I will definitely be getting some for future projects. The brad nails left these tiny holes, so we're just gonna fill it up with some wood putty. And the pine finish on this is really beautiful, but I think we could kick it up a notch with some stain. So I have special walnut right here, and I actually did a little test piece. I think that looked really good. The only tricky thing is, since this is slatted, we want to make sure that we get into each of the crevices first, and then wipe onto the surface. And I think we should be good to go. I wanted something to contrast well with the charcoal color, so I'm using special walnut for this piece. I'm using a paper towel, and I basically wiped the stain off right after applying it, just because I didn't want to get it too dark. And one tricky thing about staining slatted wood is to make sure that the stain is evenly distributed in the divots, especially because I didn't want it to get too dark. So you're gonna see that I use a popsicle stick with a paper towel to get in there. And this is gonna help remove the excess stain and worked out really perfectly. I waited overnight for the stain to dry and we're going to apply two coats of a matte polyurethane. I also sealed everything in on the chalk paint as well using that same matte polyurethane and this did not darken the color at all, but I think if you were to use a gloss or a semi-gloss finish, this would slightly deepen the color. For the drawer pull, I have this really simple and modern one. I think it's 15 inches long, so I think the scale of this is really great. You could also buy some from Ikea, but I just like the way this looked. And it just contrasts really well with all the vertical lines. We have a nice, bold, horizontal line going across. And of course, we want to make sure that this is as centered and as leveled as possible. So I'm going to use some tape to help me out. And that way, we won't have any mistakes when we drill into this, because if that happens, I honestly don't know what I would do. <laughs> My secret weapon when it comes to making anything level is to use masking tape. So you're going to see that I use it to mark off the center point both vertically and horizontally. And I just really like using this method because that way you can move it around really easily. And if you make any mistakes, it's easy to just put on a new piece of tape. That way when you're marking everything off, you're doing it on the tape and not directly on the surface that you're working on. Once everything was assembled back together and looked good to go, it was time to drill in our handle. To do this, you wanna find a drill bit that is the same size as your screw, and then just go straight through the wooden boards as well as the Ikea particle board. Both these materials are pretty soft, so it was really easy to create these new holes. Now we can go ahead and screw in the handles, and our new storage bench is complete. 
Check out these after shots. This was such a transformation. This Ikea Kids toy storage got a major upgrade with just a few changes. The matte color update modernizes it and the new slatted drawer front just makes such a statement. I love how that turned out. And adding something as simple as a sleek new handle paired with everything else just makes it look so much more elevated. All right, so here's how it's looking in the closet. So I think it's definitely a great size. And obviously when I change out the doors, this will not be hitting it. And that way we could pull this out all the way. But I would love to know your thoughts on what you think I should do to organize this. I was thinking that once we could scoot this over just a little bit more, then we could do a long board here and then do shelves going down this way. And then across here, maybe do a rod or just do hooks across. Just because I find that I don't actually put my coat on the hanger every day, so putting it on a hook is honestly easier, but would love to know your opinions there. This is still very much a work in progress, so I'm glad that I'm able to take you guys on this journey and get your opinions. I hope you guys like doing this DIY IKEA hack with me. I'm so happy that I discovered that beadboard because it was so easy to work with. And if you guys try it out as well, don't forget to share it with me over on Instagram and tag me as well. And again, a big thank you to Ritual for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to click on the link down below and use my code to get 10% off of your first three months. We are off to a great start so far, so I know it's going to look even better because if you look right behind me, that definitely needs to be addressed. And that is it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!